The intent of this video is to discuss the B-17's crew clothing system and gear that was designed for crew members to survive the freezing temperatures of the cabin. The B-17 bomber was unpressurized, uninsulated, and the bomber's heat vent system was really inadequate. The cabin's heat was supplied by an ineffective liquid glycol system. The B-17s operated at a combat altitude of 25,000 to 30,000 feet. The reference standard day outside air temperature at 30,000 feet is minus 48 degrees Fahrenheit, which equates to minus 44 degrees centigrade. Crews were exposed to extreme environments. Crew members required supplemental heat to combat the extreme cold. Bomber crew members wore various layers of insulation and supplemented the insulation with full body electric heated suits. Let's look at the buildup of the glove layers worn by a B-17 gunner. The next to skin layer consisted of a thin rayon glove insert. The second layer consisted of an electrically heated glove. The electrically heated glove was electrically connected to his electrically heated suit. His electrically heated suit was connected to the crew station's heated clothes rheostat controller. The third glove layer consisted of a well-insulated thick shearling mitten. This crew member is wearing wool long underwear, wool socks, and is getting into his electrically heated suit. There were three types of electrically heated suits. The F1 blue bunny suit, the later F2 heated suit, and the refined F3 heated suits. They all plugged into the plane's rheostat and included electric gloves and boot liners. The later electric clothing garments consisted of two independent electric circuits. If one of the electric circuits fails, only half of the garment's heat output will be lost. F1 blue bunny suits had a reputation for failing in service. Many crew members suffered burns when the suits shorted out. One issue was the robustness of the electrical wiring. Waste gunners sometimes operated their flexible mount machine guns while on their knees. The suit's wires would often fail at this location. The heat controller rheostats operated off of the plane's 24 volt DC power supply. There are 10 rheostats located on the B-17, one at each one of the crew stations. The heat controller dial allowed the crew member to adjust the suit's heat output. The suit heater rheostat at the B-17's right waste gunner station is shown here. Also note the inner phone jack box, oxygen panel gauges, and oxygen regulator as discussed in my B-17 bomber oxygen and comms video. The last insulating layer consisted of a heavy shearling type B3 bomber jacket. A silk scarf may be worn. The scarf helps in insulating the crew member's neck. During a mission, a crew member's head was on a swivel scanning for interceptors. The scarf helped by minimizing shaping, separating the gunner's skin from the bomber jacket's shearling collar. A bomber crew member, Don, included a life vest, parachute harness, flak vest, and flak apron. The B-17 crew steel flak helmets were actually covered in a felt to allow for skin contact at extreme cold temperatures. If you enjoyed this video, please like and consider subscribing to my channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.